Previously on Infinite Looney. Il est bien difficile, en géographie comme en morale, de connaître le monde sans sortir de chez soi. I am Canadian, specifically French Canadian, if it is not obvious enough with my accent. I am born and raised from Quebec City, from a modest family, although I never lacked anything as a child. I used to have big dreams, but I lost my childlike wonder into adulthood, and finally facing the reality. Anxiety. Existential crisis. Who am I? What do I want? Where am I going? I was not out of this yet when I met him. My soulmate from the other side of the world who also had asked himself the same questions. Haun from South Korea, who seemed eager to settle down as he proposed to me three months into the relationship. It's suspicious! <laughs> It was the start of a beautiful journey of discovery, open-mindedness, and basically, my life took a turn that I had never expected. How did people react around us? Well, there were mixed reactions, of course. Although it was 2016, beyond the time where an intercultural, more specifically, interracial marriage was illegal, some people still had doubts about the legitimacy of Han's feelings after his quick proposal. My family thought it was fast, but they had no problem with me being in an international union. Maybe just a bit surprised, as the odds of ending with another French Canadian were bigger in my city, but Han has been very welcomed. Around the time that we tied the knot, we started to live together and we grinded. I was still studying and Haun was working minimum wage while we were drowned in paperwork for the sponsorship for his PR. We finally ended up in our respective careers and achieved the American dream. We bought a house, Haun got the car of his dream, but something was not right. Hitting our 30s was hitting another wall. Haun has been into a dark place. Although he didn't want to admit it at the time, he suffered from depression. It was like he had a void inside of him that couldn't be filled even if he had everything that people work hard to achieve. There was nothing left to do or to hang on to. He felt trapped in a spiral of working non-stop in order to pay back the mortgage. The only few times of pleasure that he had, like his hobbies, weren't as enjoyable. This is one of the signs that depression has set in. What you used to love is now boring. Not like someone that just changes interests over time, which is normal. And of course, he thought about doing something to end his internal suffering. Something which has no turning back. Even if I do not say the specific word, you know what I am referring to, I'm sure. But instead, curiosity hit him. He looked up on YouTube to see other people's stories. If anyone was feeling like he did, People that felt trapped in a rat race, in the system. That was until he came across the fire movement. And finally, he had found hope again. Something to hold on to. And he shared to me about his findings. Fire movement? What the is that? A cult? I was reluctant at first, but the more he told me about the purpose and why people got into it, it all made sense. You see, in North America, and many other parts of the world, we are conditioned to have a certain future. From the age of five until the age of 17, 18, we go to school, preparing us to pursue studies that will determine what we are going to do for the rest of our lives. In an ideal world, we want to earn money by doing what we love the most, but this is not possible for everyone. So we go by what we are good enough and what pays enough, and then, We're out of school with student loans. What is supposedly our next goal? To have our own house. We have been told that it is better to own our property instead of paying our rent, which we are told that it is like throwing our money through the window. We are stuck with a mortgage to pay. Unless you are lucky enough to win the jackpot at the lottery, most of us are stuck working a 40 hours a week job, sometimes more, only to pay back our mortgage or other debts. Add to that other responsibilities of the daily life and that we spend an average 7-8 hours in a day to sleep. What time really is left to really enjoy ourselves? Develop a skill, enjoying a hobby, discovering the world. We work all of our lives to look forward to retirement at the age of 65, but let's be honest, isn't it too late in life? That's just how things are, everyone does it. 
That's what we are told. But there are people that found that there is another way to play the game. Unfortunately, this is a minority, because this is not things that they teach you at school. And this is intentional. Because it's easier to control uneducated people, right? And this is what a lot of people, including me, were financially uneducated. In fact, it is way better explained in the book titled Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert T. Kiyosaki. Reading that book made Haun and I realize a lot of things. And this is why we came up with our plan to follow the FIRE movement. To finally be able to enjoy life without worrying about finances and spend our time working to pay off liabilities. Because yes, a house is also a liability. Only putting money in the bank is not enough. We need that money to grow and to work for us. How? There are more than one way. Investments, stocks, real estates, to name a few examples. The end goal of FIRE is to have a passive income that will cover our living expenses each month. And a little extra won't hurt either. Will we be without the need to work? Maybe not. A little job on the side will be for the extra income for fun. But at least it will not take most of our lives and we will be able to have a better balance between work and free time. So this is why we currently invest in stocks, cryptocurrency, and also using savings like TFSA and RRSP. That's also why Haun works multiple side gigs to pile up that cash, because if you remember well, no one can save you except you. To the viewers that are a bit disappointed because they are thinking, darn it, I came for the cute international couple stuff, but now it's only about money this, money that. Well, let me reassure you, we are past the biggest chunk about finance. These past 17 episodes were like an introduction about who we are, how we met, what we are aiming for, and how we will do it. We are not done filming about more lighthearted stuff and making videos more about living as an intercultural couple. And now that summer is coming soon, it will be easier to make vlogs and find activities worth filming because let me tell you, winters are long and boring. And we have a family trip planned in near future, so stay tuned, all right? So here we are. And of course, during the rest of our YouTube journey, we're going to update here and there about the progression towards our goal, as well as any relevant financial things that we learn along the way. If there are some types of videos or videos about certain topics that you don't see other international couples do or that they do but you want to see our take on it don't be shy drop it in the comments once again thank you all for onboarding with us Han and i we spent a lot of time on this video we film we edit and we caption everything along with having our own full-time job and other commitments we are not professionals yet but seeing all the positive comments and engagement really motivates us this is not the end and we will meet you in another video au revoir Oh,